In this short lesson, the goal will be to be able to look at a number of different formula and classify those formula according to the as one of nine different decomposable proposition types. Now this is an essential skill for doing truth tree decomposition because there are nine different decomposition rules, each corresponding to one of the nine decomposable proposition types. So one of the first steps before we even begin to learn how to use the different decomposition rules is to be able to classify any formula into one of these different types. This will be beneficial because when you also start doing true tree decomposition, it will provide you with a pretty automatic way of choosing rules. You will go through the process of identifying a particular proposition as a certain type and then apply the rule that corresponds to it. This is a better procedure than looking at the proposition and kind of wondering which, pro which decomposition rule do I apply and kind of looking through the entire table. Now, there are nine different decomposition types. Conjunction, disjunction, conditional, biconditional, and then the negated form of each one of these. So negated conjunction, negated disjunction, negated conditional, negated biconditional, and then the ninth one is the doubly negated propositions. And for each one of these proposition types corresponds a truth tree decomposition rule. So if we look at conjunctions, it has the form of P caret R. The corresponding rule will be this caret D or conjunction decomposition and so on down the line. Now for all of the formula, we can classify it according to one of these different decomposition types. And so for any formula we um, look at, there will be one decomposition rule to apply to it. So what we'll do here is look at each one of these one by one and talk a little bit about patterns. What we won't do at any point of this lesson here is talk about exactly how to use these rules for trees. A conjunction is any well-formed formula whose main operator is the caret. So we look at these three examples here and we see in each case the main operator is the caret. And so if we see a formula with the main operator as a caret, we can classify that formula as a conjunction. Once you've classified a formula as a conjunction, there is one rule that will apply. That is one decomposition rule. And that is conjunction decomposition. Conjunction decomposition only applies to conjunctions. And whenever you see a conjunction, you should apply conjunction decomposition or this caret D. The next proposition type that can be decomposed are disjunctions. Now a disjunction is any well-formed formula whose main operator is the V, this kind of wedge looking character. And when we look at the three examples here, we see in each one of these examples, the main operator is the V. And so if we run across any formula whose main operator is the V, we can classify that as a disjunction. Once we've classified it as a disjunction, there'll be one truth tree decomposition rule to apply, and that will be disjunction decomposition or VD. Now, now that we look at conditionals, uh, there's something worth pointing out here. So when we looked at conjunctions and disjunctions, we said, will we see a formula, we classify it as a conjunction, and the corresponding rule is conjunction decomposition for conjunctions and disjunction decomposition for disjunctions. The same thing will be true for conditionals and biconditionals. A conditional is any well-formed formula whose main operator is the right arrow, we look at three formula right here, see each one of them has the main operator as of the right arrow. These we can identify as conditionals and then the corresponding rule for decomposing them, the rule that we should apply in a truth tree will be conditional decomposition. So conjunctions, conjunction decomposition, disjunction, de disjunction decomposition, conditional, conditional decomposition. And no surprise when we find biconditionals, who, where, which is a well-formed formula whose main operator is the double arrow, we have biconditional. The corresponding rule will be biconditional decomposition. Now again, we haven't talked about how to use any of these rules. The key thing to see is that for any, of, for any formula you might come across, it might fall into one of these four types, and you'll know that it 
if it's a conjunction, to apply conjunction, decomposition, and so forth. Now, where the twist comes is that for each of the four proposition types that we've discussed thus far, there's a negated form. And for each one of those negated forms, there's a corresponding negated decomposition rule. So the first type to look at is negated conjunctions. Now, a negated conjunction is any well-formed formula whose main operator is the negation. For each of the negated forms, all of those negated forms, the main operator will be the negation. The key thing that will differentiate each one of these negated propositional types is the next operator. By next operator, I mean the operator with the next greatest amount of scope. So when we look at negated conjunctions, notice that in each one of the three examples, the negation is the operator with the greatest amount of scope, but the operator with the next greatest amount of scope is the caret, which is the sign for conjunction. And so we can classify these types of propositions, ones where there's a negation as the greatest amount of scope, and then a caret or a conjunction, the caret having the second greatest amount of scope as negated conjunctions. And the corresponding rule to apply here won't be conjunction decomposition because we're looking at a proposition of a different type. A proposition that will be true under different conditions than regular old conjunctions. Rather, the rule that we will apply is negated conjunction decomposition. Looking at negated disjunctions, there will be a similar pattern. A negated disjunction is any well-formed formula whose main operator is the negation. But the key thing, again, to, that differentiates all the negated proposi proposition types is the operator with the second most amount of scope. And in this case, a negated disjunction will be able to identify it when the operator with the second greatest amount of scope is the V. So when we look at each one of these examples, we see the negation has the greatest amount of scope. And then the second, uh, the operator with the next most amount of scope is the V. And so we can classify this type of these propositions all as negated disjunctions. And the rule corresponding to this proposition type will be negated disjunction decomposition. The similar similar thing similar process will follow for negated conditionals. A negated conditional is a, any well-formed formula whose main operator is the sign for negation, and the operator with the greatest the next greatest amount of scope will be the right arrow. When we see any propositions that have this form, we'll classify them as negated conditionals, and the corresponding truth tree decomposition rule we will apply is negated conditional decomposition. The same thing will be true for negated biconditionals. Again, the operator with the greatest amount of scope is negated, is the negation. And so when we see that, we say, well, the operator with the greatest amount of scope is the negation. I need to look at the operator with the next most amount of scope. And when we look at that in these three examples, what we see is it's the double arrow. And so we can classify these different types of propositions as negated biconditionals. Once we've identified these propositions as negated by conditionals, we'll apply the corresponding rule, which is negated by conditional decomposition. Now the last proposition that we can decompose are propositions that have multiple negations, but there are propositions where the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next greatest amount of scope is also a negation. So that's something to keep in mind where if we think about the main operator as number one, it's in sort of first place, and we think about the operator with the second greatest amount of scope as number two or coming in second place, a double negated proposition is where the negation has both first and second place. That is two different negations, one has first, one is second. And so when we look at the three propositions here, we see the main operator is, in each one of these cases, the leftmost negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the one just right of that uh, sign for negation. And so what we have here is a doubly negated proposition. That's the essential type. And so when we think about well, which rule will I apply in order to decompose these types of propositions, it will be the double negated decomposition rule. So looking at each one of these rules again, we see that there are nine different types 
and corresponding to each one of these types there is a decomposition rule. There's conjunctions, disjunctions, biconditionals, and there's the corresponding decomposition rule for each time, for each one. Conjunction decomposition, disjunction decomposition, conditional decomposition, biconditional decomposition. And then there's the negative form of each one of these. Negated conjunction, which if we were going to apply the corresponding rule is negated conjunction decomposition, and so on down the line until we get double negation decomposition. So the key thing to walk away with here is this. When, once you set up your truth tree and you begin to say, I'm ready to decompose a particular proposition in that truth tree, you might ask yourself, well, which decomposition rule do I apply? But you shouldn't have to think about it. You should first identify it as one of these nine types and then apply the corresponding rule for that propositional type. Well, that covers this aspect of truth tree decomposition. What we haven't looked at is how exactly to use any of these decomposition rules. That will be covered by a different lesson.